2000, we bought an abandoned 100-acre farm in the foothills of the Appalachian Mountains. We spent years cleaning it up, built a new house, and now are trying to make it a functional homestead farm. Welcome to Red Tool House. Hello everybody, welcome to Red Tool House. In this episode, I want to talk about how to handle predators that are killing your chickens. So when you catch somebody like this, what do you do with him? So let's jump right into it. Well, when it comes to chickens, obviously predators are a huge issue. Everything eats chicken. I guess it's because everything tastes like chicken. So maybe that's why everything eats chicken. So you can look at all the different ways of, of taking care of your chickens, housing your chickens, protecting your chickens. If you free range, that's where they get eaten like popcorn. If you uh, have them in a controlled pasture like we do, you got a little bit better uh, opportunity to, to keep predators out. Um, chicken tractors, we have chicken tractors for some of our other chickens. So different ways to try to keep predators out. But what do you do when you've got something that's breaking in and killing your chickens despite your best defensive efforts? Well, we've run into that situation here lately. In fact, the past week, I've lost three chickens on three different nights, and the chickens are actually dead inside the coop. So as many of you know, we have an automated door to our coop, and I'll post a video up here so you can uh, see that if you're not familiar with that. So that automated door closes right at dark and it opens up at, at daybreak is how I've got it timed. But what I've discovered, these, these three chickens that have been dead have been dead inside the coop. So uh, the, the predator is getting inside and killing the chickens, and I'll spare you all the pictures of uh, the dead chicken. Um, but it had a lot of their um, flesh around their face and neck torn, and then just, just eaten, kind of cracked open and just eaten along the back there, not, not really devoured like you'd expect a large predator. So this is obviously something that's sneaky, something that has toes, something that can articulate and get in. So I'm still trying to figure out how did it get in? Did it get in? In a way, other than my coop door, is it found a, a, a way in? I've searched nooks and crannies, and I, I think I'm okay there. Or is it simply waiting uh, before the, for the door to open first thing in the morning and get in there and kill before the, the chickens can get out? So we're still trying to investigate that and figure it out. So there's a variety of predators that eat chicken, and uh, depending on the predator you're dealing with, I think determines on how you handle them. If, if I was dealing with coyote, uh, then I would handle that way differently than I was dealing with possum. Uh, with coyote, in, in our area, coyote is uh, an invasive species. It's uh, not supposed to be here, so our state has allowed you to declare open war on coyote. You can dispatch as many coyote as you see fit. Um, I really don't have coyote issues here. We have coyote, uh, but they haven't, uh, they're not getting into the chicken coop. They're not getting into the pasture. Um, haven't lost any chickens to coyote. Haven't lost any pigs to coyote. I hear them all the time, uh, but I don't have that issue. Um, I have seen a fox sneaking around here, and you know he's my concern because he's the kind of guy that in the middle of the day could come in here and nail one of them. That's why we stopped free ranging because the uh, the fox was was wearing us out. And uh, this fence line seems to keep uh, the fox at bay. He doesn't dig under. He doesn't squeeze through. So we seem to be okay there. Hawk predator issues we've talked about already with uh, our black australorps. Uh, and the hawks mistake those as crows, so we don't have to worry about hawk issues. I haven't lost a chicken to a hawk in years. Um, but the thing that I find are it's the little guys, the little guys, the raccoons, the possums. Um, you know, I'm not sure if I'm dealing with a weasel in this current situation, but you know things that have uh, dexterity and little fingers and they can open things and climb up things and, and get in. That's what I'm trying to figure out. And to me, those predators are actually a little bit more sinister than the bigger predators. Uh, at least the bigger predators, you can, you can plan for that and you can address, and, and uh, it's, it's not as big of a uh, uh, whodunit type situation. <clears throat> but with this, I've got, uh, I've got a Houdini animal that's uh, sneaking into my coop and, and wreaking havoc on the chickens. So, uh, so we'll have to put some elements in place there, set some traps, and hopefully we can catch this little devil. So with this recent string of chicken death, what I've done is I've uh, set some live traps out around the chicken coop and baited them, of course, so I can get an idea of what's uh, coming in and, and um, snooping around. So uh, coming down the next morning and seeing what uh, results I've got, I've uh, had several possums. You saw our fuzzy friend there in the intro. And uh, some of you may argue that possums don't eat chicken, <clears throat> but I would uh, strongly disagree with that. I have 
caught possum chicken-handed before, uh, eating our chickens and killing them. They really don't uh, consume them all. They just seem to really just kind of mess with them. They'll just kill them, eat a little bit of them, maybe maybe tear them open some, or just eat a leg off. It's, it's kind of uh, odd what they do and how little they actually consume of the chicken. Uh, but we've had a lot of possums. Now, I know possums have benefits. They eat a lot of ticks. Uh, they're the only marsupial we have here in the North American area and they pretty much just kind of hang out in the woods and really don't have uh, much of a concern. But uh, we've, we seem to have a flock of them around the chicken coop because I've caught three in the last several nights. So the question is, what do I do with the possums? Now, again, not everybody's going to agree with this, but um, it's my experience with relocating a possum, you really have to take that possum a long way to keep him from being an issue. So uh, quite frankly, if, um, if I catch a possum and he's in my chicken coop area, then uh, he's as guilty as charged. He has uh, chicken death on his lips. So um, he gets um, dismissed, if you will. So those, uh, those get, to, uh, get to take a dirt nap. But um, I don't necessarily dispatch everything that I catch in my live traps because yeah, I may find that, uh, well, I may find that I get my cat, I may get uh, my neighbor's cat, <laughs> I may even get a chicken in my live trap. Sometimes I've had some failures there as well. Well, not everything that gets caught in my live trap is a predator and gets dispatched. Sometimes I have some failures. <laughs> So this uh, young lady here, she likes cat food just as much as possums do. So we're going to let her out. And she can return to the rest of the flock. It's one of the issues. Obviously a live trap traps indiscriminately. <clears throat> so when I use live traps, I just uh, obviously just do a basic bait and set. I'll set the trap where I think uh, maybe there's a traffic area where the animal's coming in and finding access into the uh, pasture or the coop. So like in this example, maybe I got a low spot that, uh, that it could be going under. So I just simply set the trap, of course. Get the trigger ready. Put it here along the edge of my fence line and then I like to bait it with just a little bit of cat food. Who doesn't like cat food, right? And uh, then obviously check that out and see how that works out. So again, as I've mentioned, my, uh, my live traps, I set them in areas. There's a spot here where uh, the chicken wire has been pulled away and I see something's been squeezing under here. So I've got a trap set to hopefully catch it. Um, again, not a big deal that the predator gets inside the pasture because it's nighttime predators I'm dealing with. And at this point, the chickens are obviously in the in the coop and they're they're resting for the night so it, it, it really doesn't I mean it's obviously an issue but it's not a huge issue that uh, that the predator is getting inside the pasture area so the trick is to figure out when and how the predator is getting into the coop and uh, obviously be able to thwart his efforts there by uh, fixing the problem or catching the predator ideally I would like to just find a way to keep the predator out um, I'm kind of a live and let live kind of guy but uh, also, once you cross the line and have a taste for chicken, then you're always going to be coming back for it. So I think once that happens, then you're going to have to deal with a predator in a lethal uh, means. So can you transport <coughs> raccoons and possums far enough away to, uh, to, for them not to come back? Sure, I guess you can. I've, I've read that you know, upwards of two miles uh, before they can come back to that area. But if you think about it, unless you live on the edge of a large national forest or something like that, you're really just taking your problem and giving it to somebody else. Um, so I don't know that that's necessarily, it may be humane for that animal, but it may not necessarily be humane for other people's livestock. So uh, obviously use your own discretion, stay within the confines of the law, of course, if you're going to dispatch predators, <clears throat> but uh, you do have to protect your livestock. Well, next morning, let's see what we got here. There's one. He's <laughs> definitely come through here. 
I got a blood trail. <laughs> Well, so the plot thickens. I've got a blood trail, but I don't have a carcass. But I do have one of my roosters here. He's got a lot of blood on his comb on top of his head there. So he's, uh, he's thrown down with somebody. His comb uh, normally leans over like that, so he's, I don't see a piece of it missing, but it's definitely leaning. So somebody's coming in from a different angle, discovered a spot at the corner of the pasture fence there where uh, something's squeezing under. So tonight I'll set my trap there and we'll see what we can find. So I'd be curious to read your comments on how you all handle predators. Are you a live and let live? Do you trap and release? Or do you dispatch anything that you find? So feel free to leave a comment below and let me know. We'll get a little discussion going there and be curious to see how you all handle that. Well, again, we appreciate everybody watching. Give us a thumbs up if you like this video. Subscribe if you haven't. Check us out on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Red Toolhouse Farm. Take care, everybody.